Tonight I'm playing What's Wrong With My WRX. Let me get this thing jacked up. Since this car has over 250,000 miles and I don't know the history of the bearings, I decided to replace both of them. But most of the footage in this video is of me replacing the one that actually seemed bad. So I have been getting a lot of noise from my, what sounds like my wheel bearings. So, so I'm gonna see if that's what the issue is. I'll start by taking off the calipers. I believe this is a 17 M&M. Hang this up out of the way, like that. And the rotor comes off. Yes, and I absolutely, I absolutely do need to do something with this, but that's in the works. Let's see if this uh, bearing has any issues. And it doesn't seem like it. It really doesn't seem like it. I really, really should have taken this nut off before I took everything off. Let's see if I can employ a trick. Yeah, I'll put the caliper back on. Stick a screwdriver through here so I can lock that down. All right, let's see if I have enough strength to get it off. 32 millimeter socket. I think it's moving. Ugh. All right. So now all this can come right back off. Now this bearing doesn't look like there's any issues with it. Maybe if I take the axle out and give it a little more freedom, but it doesn't seem to be this bearing. All right, so I'm take the shield off first. It doesn't necessarily have to be taken off, but it's just gonna make things a lot easier. ABS sensor. Hang it out of the way. I'll put links to the special tools and kits I use in this video in the description because they make this job a lot easier. And again, the top one has a washer, the bottom one doesn't. And the upper one that sets camber does have a white mark that I'm going to line back up with the white mark on the shock so that the camber will be set at where it was. If this works like the other side, banging on this with the hammer should release it from the bottom. Let's see if we have luck. I am gonna throw a little bit of PB blaster on there. Hopes that it'll free it up a little better and put a little flathead screwdriver in there to open up the pinch a little bit. And it is moving. It's coming. Maybe that's the way to do it. All right, so we're off. Ugh, we're off. If I was prepared, this would be a great time to do lower ball joints. But I wasn't even thinking that way when I started this project. But at least I know how to get off the top now. And guess what? This one could have very well been our issue. Yep, listen to that. Ah, so I'm feeling much better about replacing it now. I won't deny. Please. I, 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 I want the knife. So I'm just pressing the hub out now. I used a socket whose outer diameter was slightly smaller than the hub. And I don't know, is it out? So you don't need that much space. There was only like maybe a between 
three quarters and a half inch of space for me to press it out. And once it's freed, it just kind of falls. You don't have to press it all the way out. Since this is my least favorite thing to take out, I'm going to go ahead and take this race off of the hub. All right, well, that'll do it. Back to the press. Now, these bearing clamps is what I'm gonna call it. The smaller ones, these rods may bend, but on these big thick ones, I haven't had it bend on me. This is not the way this bearing separator is designed to be used, but since I have a press, this combination makes it real easy. I'll put a link to a video where I do use these bearing separators as designed to remove a bearing race. And we're through. Let's clean this up a bit. All right, so we're gonna take off this seal and get it to snap ring. And this is the seal and the bearing on the other side. I just think it was not put in properly. I mean, I don't see how this sort of failure happens over time. I mean, it could, but I think it was a poor install. But anyway, the way I got the seal out last time was to, of course you can pick at it, but put the, I put this pry bar just like that. If you can see that, put this pry bar like that and then hammer it from the other side and it pops it out. Bam. And that time, Everything came out with it. That didn't happen last time. Maybe it did. But anyway, that's a quick way to get that out. And now I have just the snap ring and the inner race. Last time the snap ring kept slipping on me. Let's see if I can do a better job this time. Come on, that come in. Slip number one. Slip number two. Attempt number three. And it's out. And of course I'm gonna wipe it down too. And in one of my kits, I have this perfect sleeve or whatever you want to call it it'll fit right there so allow the race to come through i'll put a picture of the kit up at some point and again from another kit i have this fits nicely in here now there is the ridge that the bearing race on when you're pressing it in from the other direction you don't want to get on the outermost ridge but the race is just inside of it just inside of it And we're out. There it is. Clean this out a little bit. And these are the bearings I'm using. I got them from fastwrx.com. NTN, you can see the part number. Again, I'll put a link in the description. I need to get better about that because I'll do a video and people, hey, where's the link? And then I got to go find the link. But if it's not in the description, hit me up and be like, hey, you didn't put it in the description. Here is the new bear. And it's going to go in right here, just like that. And it sits nicely. So I got the old race, some bearing install plates, and I need something to make up the space. Because I don't like pumping all the time. And feeling resistance, so I'm gonna stop and check it and see if I'm all the way through. All right, let's see. Did I get it all the way through? It looks like I did. It looks like it is all the way through. Let's put it in the snap ring. Let's see how many times it slips on me now. But I think I kind of got an idea of how to do this. Come on, buddy. I gotta do some research. I've never had any issues with these, but I imagine they have some with like little hooks that would do a little better job of this. called a snap ring because it should snap into place. Bam, there we go. When you know it's gonna slip, you kinda guide it in. You can stay compressed. And now we're gonna put on the outer seal. The kit comes with two seals. The one with this little lip goes on the inside towards the drive shaft. This goes on the outside towards the hub. I will position it like this. And I could press it in, but I think I could tap it in just as easy. Again with this tool that is about the right size. Just gonna tap it in until it's flush. Not strong blows, just enough blows to get it moving. And if you wanna make sure it's flush, I'm gonna get one that's slightly bigger. And then when it stops, I'll know I'll be done. 
solid sound all around. And it's in there good and flush, hella flush. So now we need to press this guy in and I've already wiped it off back over to the press. This is actually footage from the first side I did. So don't mind the seal resting on the hub. Lesson learned, install the seal before you press in the hub. Now I'm holding this level and you can feel it levels itself out on the hub because there's like a, the idea of the bearing is kind of beveled. So I'm gonna hold this level until it gets pressure and it should go in pretty smoothly. And it is. And this should push that little yellow thing right into it. All right, I'm getting some resistance, so I'm gonna stop there and check on it. And I think I am golden. Check that out. And the bearing. Oh. <laughs> the bearing actually moves great. So tomorrow we can install it. Oh, no, 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 no. One more thing. We have this seal that are made up with the axle. But yeah, this goes right here. Wait a minute, can I just press that in? I can just, I can just about press this in. Let's see. It's a muscle man move. And I'm just pressing it in until my fingers feel that it's flush. All right, I ain't that strong. I'm gonna tap it in a little bit. This is the old race, I'm just gonna It shouldn't require much. Yeah, I think that'll get it. Yeah, just push it in until it stops. And now we can install this tomorrow. A lot of steps and I used a lot of tools, but all in all, it wasn't difficult, just tedious. Yeah, so we'll see if the car is a bit smoother tomorrow. Now that is a nice, tight, smooth bearing. Let's go install these bad boys. Now these are still pretty lubed up. So. Put that in. Line that up. Trying not to mess up the CV boot. Reinstall this so it stays in place. Now nothing's tight, it's just everything's getting put back where it should go. ABS sensor, which is dirty. There you go. Look a little better now. Oh man, that's supposed to be in there. There, it's a lot neater now, huh? Ah. Come on. Bam. Good to go. Put this bolt in, make sure it's... Oh man, this is nice and smooth. So when I get back from the walk with my beautiful wife, I will uh, tighten down everything and finish assembling it. Yes, I will be doing something about these brakes, but they're functioning. They look bad, but they're functioning for now, so it is a low priority. And this axle nut is to be tightened to 162 foot pounds. And I do not have a torque wrench that goes that high. So uh, I'm gonna tighten it as tight as this one can go. And I'm gonna buy me another torque wrench and come back and tighten them again later. 
But what I can do is hit it a little more with this breaker bar. That's somewhere north of 150. So I'm gonna stake it and then come back and verify the torque. All right, this side is done. I'm gonna play the same game on the other side. And then I'm looking forward to driving this bad boy. In a video some time ago, I was doing work on the, I don't remember what I was working on, but I realized that this had seen better days. So I ordered a new one and now's a good time to do it. I got the car jacked up and the wheel off. So ordered a new one for both sides because I don't know what happened, but this one was very messed up. So let's see if this new one actually even fits. Took these little clips off of the old one. So I got the new fender liner installed and it looks nice and new. But the issue is, the issue is it is not a perfect fit. I'm gonna have to massage it a bit. And that is more than I want to do tonight. So I'm gonna do this one, I'm gonna leave the other one I'm gonna leave the other one for another time, but I'll get this one in, put the wheels on, and then it's getting late, but I still may go on a test drive tonight. All right, so I'm on the highway cruising, and believe it or not, this is better. And this is a lot better. The wheel used to shake a lot, but now it doesn't. But it makes me wonder if the rear ones are bad as well. But yeah, it's a lot better, so. That was at least part of the problem. So now I'm gonna check the rears out and see if that makes it even smoother because I do still feel a little bit, but it's not coming from the front. If you would like to follow along as I continue to improve and maintain my 04 WRX, hit subscribe. If you'd like to see the things I've already done to it, check out the playlist. Thanks for watching, take care.